I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell. Welcome to Rome, the Eternal City, and I invite you to join me on a spiritual pilgrimage as we continue to visit the Lenten Stational Churches of Rome. Our pilgrimage today on this Sunday in Lent takes us once again to the great Basilica of St. Peter's in Rome. The dome which you see behind me marks the actual burial site of the Prince of the Apostles. We go back to St. Peter's, we reflect upon the fact that Peter was buried just outside the ancient circus, the circus of Gaius and Nero. It was in this circus that many of the early Christians were first persecuted by Nero. Many of them faced death heroically, covered with the skins of wild beasts and torn to pieces. Others were used as human torches and lit to illuminate the circus at night. There was very little doubt that Peter himself died also in this circus. The body was then taken down from the cross and placed in a grave just outside the circus. This great church, the center and the heart of Christendom bears everywhere the mark of St. Peter. Even the great obelisk familiar to countless faithful pilgrims who have come to pray at this church holds aloft the relic of the true cross, symbol of the martyrdom of Christ and also the martyrdom of Peter and all the Christians who face such a horrible death. This is a great day to reflect upon the importance of our fidelity to Peter. Ubi Petrus, Ibi Ecclesia, the old Latin expression. Where Peter is, there is the church. Let us examine our hearts as we move towards the tomb of the great apostle, the prince of the apostles on this day, and reflect in our hearts, are we being faithful to the church as we should, obedient and submissive to the voice of Peter and the voice of Christ, who speaks to us today through the Holy Father. Let us go now to the church of San Pietro. This basilica is truly the glory of the Catholic Church and a symbol of the triumph of the Catholic Reformation. The actual dome is built over the humble grave of the fishermen from Galilee to whom our Lord entrusted the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The entire basilica is designed in cruciform pattern of a Latin cross and is completely dominated by the magnificent dome of Michelangelo, a work of surpassing beauty and probably the greatest work in the history of architecture. All domes in some way seek to imitate its beauty and grandeur. The selection of the Latin cross design was chosen in order to accommodate the large congregations that gathered in the basilica. As one enters into the basilica, the more one walks into it, the more one is overwhelmed by its grandeur and immensity. This is one of the reasons why the Latin cross was chosen over the Greek cross. The Greek cross, which has equal arms, while the Latin cross has the vertical or the upright bar, which corresponds to the nave, far longer, far more fitting for papal celebrations and processions. As one walks along the floor of the basilica, one can see the lovely cosmetesque pavement with its marble inlay. One can also notice, inlaid in bronze lettering, the various great churches and their names found all over the world, showing the spot where those churches would fit inside this, the mother church of all of Christendom. The actual papal altar with its baldacchino was designed by the genius of Bernini and lies directly over the tomb of the Prince of the Apostles. The confession underneath the high altar refers to the confession made by Christ and also by the martyr, in this particular instance by St. Peter. Here the faithful kneel and make their profession of faith, expressing their attachment and loyalty to the successor of St. Peter and to Christ. This actual confession was built over the spot that was originally an ancient Roman necropolis. The actual tomb and remains of Peter have been identified and lie underneath this spot. Behind the grill at the back is the pallium. This is a woolen vestment which is given to the Metropolitan Archbishops as a sign that they share and are to teach in union with the Pope as he ministers to the flock of Christ. 
the great bronze baldacchino, designed by Bernini, towers over the papal altar. There can be no doubt that the spiral columns in their design go back to the ancient basilica of St. Peter's, which Julius I had torn down. Remains of these columns can be seen in the niches of the piers which support the great dome itself. At the end of the basilica is the great cathedra, or the chair of St. Peter, with the beautiful alabaster window of the Holy Spirit. Again, this magnificent work is the work of Gian Lorenzo Bernini. As the sun sets in the west, the light which pours through this window bathes the entire basilica with gold, symbolizing the grace of the Holy Spirit filling and suffusing the Church of God. An ancient wooden chair, believed to have been used by St. Peter, is held within the Baroque chair and is one of the precious relics of the Roman Church. The highly dramatic statues on the right and left-hand side of the chair, typical of the Baroque period, show us the doctors of the church who defended and extolled the authority of St. Peter in the Apostolic See. The Western bishops wearing the mitre are St. Augustine and St. Ambrose. The two Eastern bishops are St. Basil and St. Athanasius. All throughout this basilica, every article of faith that was attacked by the religious revolutionaries is now boldly affirmed with a joyful serenity and a confidence that comes from the certitude of faith. At the base of the four great piers which support the dome, we find reference to the major relics which are preserved near the tomb of St. Peter. St. Helen's statue is found here as she found the true cross, and a portion of that true cross is still held here and venerated on this date. The statue of St. Veronica holding the veil which had the image of the face of Christ. The Roman centurion Longinus with the lance which pierced the side and heart of Christ is also to be found in this basilica. This statue was personally executed by the hands of Bernini himself. Also depicted here are the statues of St. Andrew, who was the brother of St. Peter. His skull also was preserved in this church, but Pope Paul VI, as an act of charity, returned it to the Greek church as a sign of his goodwill. Next to the statue of St. Longinus, we find the ancient and venerated bronze statue of St. Peter. His silver foot has been kissed by countless pilgrims who have journeyed here down through the centuries. Many believe the statue dates back to the 13th century. Others claim as far back as the 5th century.